have seen a moment, the government has a particular lane. To begin this discussion, I want you to turn to Genesis 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and following. This describes the overarching kingdom mandate given to mankind at creation. And, and this transcends every legal document that governs a land. This, is, this transcends the charter. And in fact, I would say this, that the Constitution, I think according to its founders, sought to actually uphold what we're going to see right now. Genesis 1, verse 26 and following. Then God said, familiar passage, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them note this rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth god creates man to rule over the creation verse 27 god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them Verse 28, God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God gives to man the unique responsibility to exercise dominion over the earth, to rule and subdue the earth. What this is is an inalienable right given by God to man. It's an undeniable right, and by right I mean authority. God has given to man the authority to rule and subdue the earth. And that comes with certain freedoms. The right to life, that is the right to live the life that God has given to you, up until he takes it away. The right to work, yes, in giving to man. The responsibility to rule over the earth. Work is a fundamental inalienable right. Man, my, the Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. Work is a, a right given to man by God. The right to have a family. The right to be with your family. The right to be with your family when they're dying. That is a God-given right. An inalienable right. The right to acquire property. To possess property. To own that property. That's part of ruling and, 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 and subduing the earth. It's part of exercising dominion over the earth. Now, to do that effectively, what is absolutely critical? If man is going to rule over the earth and exercise dominion and carry out his, his, uh, his inalienable God-given rights, what does he need? Especially in a fallen world. He needs government. Why? Government is in place to protect those inalienable rights. The purpose of government is to facilitate mankind exercising dominion over the earth. The government is fundamentally there to make sure that we can fulfill our mission to subdue the earth, to work, to worship, to, to be fruitful and multiply. The government is a God-ordained institution Put in place to ensure law and order and to protect these God-given rights or this God-given authority. So government is actually vital to man fulfilling this mission, especially in a fallen world. Now, one of the earliest times, if not the earliest time, that government is implied is in Genesis 9. So turn there. And it's implied in relationship to murder. Genesis 9, 6. The consequence for murder is put forth, and that implies government, because someone would need to enforce the consequence for committing murder. 